So before I start, I would just like to thank Parkinson's UK and the East Midlands Research Support Networks Forum for inviting me to give this talk on the 18th of November 2017. The talk was entitled, Where Are We Now with Parkinson's Research? A cure for Parkinson's requires three components. Number one, a disease halting mechanism. A treatment that will slow down the progression of the condition. Number two, a neuroprotective agent, a drug or a compound that will protect the remaining cells and provide a nurturing environment for the third component, which is a cell replacement therapy, replacing the cells that have been lost by introducing new cells to take up that lost function. What I'd like to do with my talk today is provide an overview of the research related to each of these three components. And I will start off by providing a brief description of what Parkinson's disease is for the purposes of this talk. Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative condition. That means that we're losing cells in the brain. It is characterized by a trio of motor features. These include slowness of movement, rigidity, and arresting tremor, as well as a variable host of additional non-motor features, such as sleep disturbance, gastrointestinal problems, and in some cases, anxiety. These vary from person to person. All of these features of Parkinson's disease are associated with the loss of selective populations of cells in the brain. As opposed to Alzheimer's, which is the most common neurodegenerative condition, in which you see a universal loss of cells, Parkinson's disease, the second most common neurodegenerative condition, has, is characterized by specific populations of cells being affected. The classical example of this is the dopamine-producing cell. The dopamine-producing cells reside in an area of the brain called the midbrain, which you can see here. On this slide, you can see an image with two sections of midbrain. On the right-hand side is a cross-sectional image from a healthy brain, and dopamine-producing cells also produce a dark pigment, which allows you to visualize them by eye. And you can see these dark pigmentations in this area here called the substantia nigra. On the left hand side, you can see a cross section of the midbrain from a person that passed away with Parkinson's disease. And you can see that there is a significant reduction in the level of dark pigmentation. These dopamine producing cells extend branches up into the center of the brain to an area called the basal ganglia to two areas in particular called the caudate nucleus and the putamen. This is where the bulk of the dopamine that is produced in your brain is released. With regards to our ability to move, the basal ganglia is a very inhibitory region of the brain. It inhibits our ability to move. Dopamine that is released in the basal ganglia helps to smooth this process. And this is why when people start to lose dopamine neurons, their ability to move becomes very inhibited. And we can visualize the loss of dopamine producing cells using brain imaging techniques. On this slide here, you see two images from what is called a DAT scan. This is a brain imaging technique that allows us to look at the level of dopamine activity in the basal ganglia. On the left side of the panel, you see a bird's eye view of a healthy individual's brain with two bright regions in the middle, which is the putamen. On the right side of this image, you will see a DAT scan from a person with Parkinson's disease. And you can see that there is a significant reduction in the amount of dopamine activity in the putamen. So the obvious question becomes, why are we losing these dopamine producing cells? Well, in addition to the loss of selective populations of cells, the Parkinsonian brain is characterized by the appearance of dense clusters of proteins. And these proteins form circular bodies, which we refer to as Lewy bodies. And one of the main proteins that is densely packed into the Lewy body is a protein called alpha-synuclein. It sounds like a distant galaxy, but it is actually one of the most common proteins that you have in your brain. It makes up about 1% of all the material there. And some time ago, in the 1990s, some clever scientists collected hundreds of brains 
from people who had passed away with Parkinson's disease, and they'd passed away at different stages of the condition, very early after diagnosis, and in some cases, a very long time after diagnosis. And what the research scientists did was analyze where in those brains the Lewy bodies, these dense little clusters of protein, were present. And what they found was a trend towards early diagnosed people, people who had just been diagnosed before passing away, having Lewy bodies in the lower parts of the brain, down here in the brain stem. Folks who had had the condition for some time had Lewy bodies present in the brain stem, but also in other areas of the brain. And those who had had the condition for extended periods of time had Lewy bodies present in many areas of the brain. And I'm going to be coming back to these Lewy bodies in alpha-synuclein very shortly, as I now turn my attention to the first component of any cure for Parkinson's disease, which is a disease-halting mechanism. A disease-halting mechanism is going to be a treatment that will slow down or stop the progression of the condition. How the condition is progressing is a major question for researchers in the field at the moment. And one possibility is that the protein I was just talking about, alpha-synuclein, is being passed from cell to cell. And we have evidence of this based on the cell transplantation trials of the 1990s. The individuals that were transplanted at that time with uh, healthy cells have subsequently passed away via natural causes and their brains have been analyzed and what the researchers have found is that healthy cells within the transplantation have developed into dopamine neurons and extended their branches out into the surrounding regions of the brain but these dopamine neurons also exhibit the card one of the cardinal features of Parkinson's disease which is the Lewy bodies and you can see an example here. This is a cell that was inside the grafted area, and the brown pigmentation is a Lewy body slowly developing. It looks very similar to the Lewy bodies that we see in the substantia nigra, or the midbrain of this particular individual, as you can see here. This has given rise to the idea that perhaps alpha-synuclein is being passed from cell to cell. And this is how the disease is slowly progressing. And there are multiple possible mechanisms by which this could be occurring. And this is forming the foundation of our approach to slowing or stopping the progression of the condition. Now, stopping or slowing the progression can be done in two ways, directly or indirectly. You can think of the direct approach as a full frontal assault by an army on enemy forces, attacking the front line. One example of the direct approach is called immunotherapy. This involves boosting our immune system's ability to recognize the toxic form of alpha-synuclein that is being passed from cell to cell. And there are currently two clinical trials ongoing that are using small proteins called antibodies to target this toxic form of alpha-synuclein and grab it as it is being passed from cell to cell and the, um, alerting the immune system to remove it. And there are two clinical trials using this approach, one in Austria, conducted by a company called Aphoris, and another in America, being conducted by a company called Prothena. And both of these companies are conducting phase two clinical trials, which will be providing results in 2018 or 2019. In addition to direct approaches, there are also indirect approaches. The indirect approach, using the army analogy I used before, can be thought of as guerrilla warfare, attacking the enemy lines from behind, going after the supply lines, and limiting the army's ability to move. And this approach is being investigated in multiple ways in the clinic for Parkinson's disease. One approach involves boosting the cell's recycling system. If a buildup of proteins like alpha-synuclein inside the cell is the problem, then boosting the cell's waste recycling system should be beneficial. And there are multiple clinical trials currently ongoing with just such an approach in mind. In London, England and London, Canada, there are two phase two clinical trials 
for a drug called Ambroxol. This is a clinically available drug that is used for respiratory issues. And we should know the results of those trials in 2018. In addition, there are two, phase, there are two trials currently being set up for a drug called nilotinib. This is a currently a clinically available cancer drug for leukemia. And the results of those trials should be available in 2019-2020. In addition to boosting the cell's ability to recycle waste and dispose of it, another approach to another indirect approach is called immunomodulation. Immunomodulation involves reducing the immune system's ability to target and dispose of sick and dying cells. Recently, a phase one clinical trial of sigramistin, a clinically available drug, the drug that is used for bone marrow transplantation, demonstrated interesting results in people with Parkinson's disease. By reducing the ability of the immune system to target sick and dying cells, we hopefully give those cells a chance to revive and become healthy again. And these have been some examples of how we are trying to slow or stop the progression of the condition. Next, I'd like to move to the second component, which is a neuroprotective agent. This will be a compound that will help to nurture and rejuvenate the remaining cells, bringing sick and unhealthy cells back to life. Here, there is a range of clinically available drugs being repurposed for this task. In 2017, we had very interesting phase two clinical trial results from a drug that is used for diabetes. That drug is called Bijurin, also known as Exenatide. Bijurin is a GLP-1 agonist, which has demonstrated very beneficial results in models of Parkinson's disease in the, in the lab. And early clinical trials have suggested that it might be having a positive effect in humans. The recent phase two trial was double blind, placebo controlled, and indicated that Bijurin is having an effect, at least on motor features of Parkinson's. Another clinically available drug that is being tested in Parkinson's is Esodiol, or UDCA. This is a treatment for gallstones. There appears to be some mitochondrial dysfunction in Parkinson's disease, and Esodiol has demonstrated the ability to reduce this dysfunction. The University of Minnesota is cu currently conducting a phase one safety trial, and the results of that trial should be available for us in 2018. A third clinically available drug that is currently being tested in a large phase three trial is called isratapine. Isratapine is used for the treatment of high blood pressure. Isratapine is a calcium channel blocker. And in preclinical lab-based models of Parkinson's, it's demonstrated very beneficial effects. And finally, there is a large phase two clinical trial being conducted here in the UK for simvastatin. Simvastatin is a cholesterol reducing drug and the results of that trial should be released in 2019-2020. In addition to repurposing clinically available drugs, there is currently a lot of clinical research being conducted on novel compounds. The best example of this is glial-derived neurotrophic factor, or GDNF. A recent trial of this, however, in Bristol, UK, has released initial results that are disappointing, and we are still awaiting the final report. But this has not stopped other groups from researching neurotrophic factors for Parkinson's disease. And in August 2017, a company in Finland called Hurantis Pharma began recruiting subjects for their clinical trial of a neurotrophic factor called cerebral dopamine neurotrophic factor, or CDNF. And we look forward to seeing the results of that clinical trial. Clinically available repurposed drugs and neurotrophic factors will not only protect the remaining cells in the brain of a person with Parkinson's, but also provide a nurturing environment for the third component of our cure for Parkinson's, which is some form of cell replacement therapy, introducing new cells to take up the lost function. As I mentioned in my definition of Parkinson's, it is a progressive condition, and we see this in the dopamine neurons of the midbrain. As the condition progresses, we see less and less dopamine neurons, and this results in less and less dopamine-releasing fibers in the putamen. And you can see this here on the bottom panel of images. The dark pigmentation are the dopamine-releasing fibers. Over time, there is a reduction. And the idea of cell replacement therapy is to go in as these fibers are being lost 
and introduce new cells that can take up their lost function. A good example of cell replacement therapy is cell transplantation. This involves a surgical procedure in which new cells are injected into the putamen and left to develop into mature neurons. Some of these cells will become dopamine neurons and you can see here from previous cell transplantation clinical trials that the dop dopamine neurons will project their branches out into the surrounding area where they can release dopamine. Ideally, this means that the brain will start to produce enough dopamine of its own and the, and the person with Parkinson's disease can reduce the level of L-dopa treatment that they are taking. And there is currently a large clinical trial involving a European-wide consortium called TransEuro that is currently testing the safety and efficacy of a cell transplantation approach for Parkinson's. The classic cell transplantation approach has involved taking tissue from aborted fetuses, dissociating the cells, and then transplanting them into the brain. Individuals who have received this procedure are then treated with immunosuppression drugs, which suppress the immune system and give the cells the best chance to mature and survive in the long term. This approach, however, has obvious ethical and moral issues with regards to the origin of the tissue being transplanted. In addition, there are significant problems with getting enough supply of the tissue. And this has led many researchers to embryonic stem cells, which, are, which provide a renewable supply of cells that can be transplanted. And planning for a follow-up of the TransEuro trial that will involve the transplantation of embryonic stem cells is currently underway in Sweden and the UK. Embryonic stem cells are derived from a fertilized female egg. The egg is allowed to develop for five to seven days and form what's called a blastocyst. And inside the blastocyst, there is a group of cells that are called the inner cell mass. The inner cell mass is removed from the blastocyst and then grown in cell culture. And these cells can be differentiated or matured into any cell type that we want. And recipes have been developed for encouraging these cells to become muscle cells, skin cells, and brain cells. And these recipes can be further perfected to make specific types of brain cells. In our case, dopamine neurons. And there is currently a phase one clinical trial that is being conducted by Professor Zhao at Jingzhou University in, in China, where they will be transplanting embryonic stem cell derived neural precursor cells into people with Parkinson's. So the idea is to take embryonic stem cells over here on the left and differentiate them, encourage them to become neural cells. And these neural cells, which will ultimately differentiate into neurons, will be transplanted into people with Parkinson's. There is also a phase one clinical trial evaluating the safety of neural stem cells in people with Parkinson's disease being conducted by Cytotherapeutics in Melbourne, Australia. This trial is ongoing. And so far, they have transplanted six of the 12 subjects that they plan to for their phase one trial. The results of this study are expected in 2019-2020. The cells that Cytotherapeutics is transplanting, however, are slightly different to the embryonic stem cells I was mentioning above. These are parthenogenic stem cells. Parthenogenic stem cells involve unfertilized female eggs. They are encouraged to become activated and start dividing. And the reasoning for this is that it avoids any ethical issues with regards to the destruction of a human embryo. So in summary, what I've tried to do today is provide you with a overview, a brief overview, certainly not exhaustive, but a brief overview of where we are with regards to finding a cure for Parkinson's. It's going to require three components, as I've said, a disease halting mechanism, and we have multiple experimental options um, in this regard, both direct and indirect approaches. It will also require a neuroprotective agent. And as I've suggested, we've got numerous clinically available drugs that are being tested and repurposed for Parkinson's, in addition to novel compounds being tested in clinical trials. And finally, it will involve, it will require a cell replacement therapy. And there are multiple groups around the world currently taking this approach forward into the clinic. 
And I'm going to end there, and I'll be very happy to answer any questions. If you have them, you can just leave them in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching.